Greetings, Lucky Legend. My name is Lucky. This is Lucky Lad TV. I'm yours for this video. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. If you can, I apologize because it probably doesn't look that good. If you can't, great. That's how I want it to be. I'm recording this using OBS. Um, XSplit is great. I like it. I like how it works. I use it for my capture card for the time being. Um, when my XSplit runs out, I'm probably going to stop using it because OBS is free and I like how OBS works. I'm more comfortable with it. But it is, this is Lucky Analytics team building for the Mixed Life Orb Electros, and Electros is so easy and so hard to build a team around. Because, as you know, Electros has no weaknesses. It has Levitate and it's an Electric type, so it inherently has zero weaknesses. Which means you don't have to build a core around Electros. Which is like, okay, cool, so I don't have to, you know, worry about countering weaknesses. But to the same extent, you then you have to go... Well, that means I have to make a core in and of itself. Which is probably more difficult than trying to build a core that revolves around shared weaknesses. So what I did is I just went with the tier. This is the RU tier. That's what Electros is in. And I figured, well, if we're going to be building a team around a Pokemon with no weaknesses, I should probably cater to the tier itself and potential Pokemon that Electros can't really deal with. For example, Electros cannot deal with Flygon. I know what you're thinking. Flygon's a dragon type and you're immune to ground. What's the problem? Well, a choice banded outrage from Flygon will destroy my face. And I can't hit it back with... I can't really hit it back. I can hit it with a knockoff, which will do a decent amount of damage. But it's not going to one-shot. It probably wouldn't, and it wouldn't be a two-hit KO because I would have knocked off its item. And the, fo the following Outrage would probably take me out. And I can't stay in on it and go for a U-turn because I would take so much damage from the Outrage that I would be screwed. So, I needed a Flygon switch in. Because Flygon was the biggest problem that I had right off the bat. Because I was looking at the Smogon uh, page for our little vacuum here, and it's like, yeah, Flygon will fuck your face off. And I'm like, whoa! That's aggressive! And accurate! I need something to switch in on Flygon. And that is where our good friend Benedict comes in. Benedict is our Flygon switch. Basically, the way that I'm going to do this version of Lucky Analytics, uh, since there's no face cam and there's no live team building aspect of it. I'm going to go through my thought process building the team, and then I'm going to go over the individual sets and my thought process with those, and then I'm going to go over the potential strategies using the team. So it's going to be like threefold. Anyway, so I needed a reliable switch in for Flygon, which is where Benedict comes in. Benedict is immune to both of Flygon's stabs. I was originally thinking of going with Aromatisse. Aromatisse is a really great mon, it's really fat, it has, you know, wish passing abilities, it has base like 101 HP or something like that. I can tell you exactly what it is actually. It has, yeah, base 101, sorry, tired, base 101 HP, which is good, but it, it can't take earthquakes. Uh, it cannot take Choice Banded Earthquakes for days. Uh, that's the issue that it has. Aromatisse, can, it can take probably two. Um, I'm not sure though, because Flygon is really strong, and Choice Banded Flygon is a thing, and Aromatisse can't outspeed it, no matter how hard you try. You could probably put a Choice Scarf on a Timid Florgus max speed, and it wouldn't outspeed a Flygon, because it's slow. It has base 29 speed. It's not outspeeding anything. So I knew that I needed something that could take Earthquakes as well. So I went with Benedict. And that's where Wish comes in. Benedict has access to a lot of recovery moves. It has access to, as you can see right here, it has Soft Boiled right there. It has Roost. And it has, of course, uh, Wish, which is, uh, which is on it. So, 
There's a lot of different things that I could have done with Benedict, but I wanted Wish so that I could pass the Wish off to a very specific Pokemon, which I will get into a little bit later. And actually, I'll just get into it right now. I want to be able to pass the Wish off to Vacuum because it has that Life Orb. It's going to be taking you know recoil damage the whole time, but you know I can easily switch in on. I can go for a Wish and then I can switch into Vacuum because Vacuum can still take hits. It's still bulky, as you can see right here. It's not you know strictly special, but it's bulky. Benedict also has access to Thunder Wave. This team is extremely slow. As you see right here, well, as you would have seen, Boils, our, our buddy Boils, is the fastest Pokemon on this team. With a base speed of 74 and a speed stat of 96, Boils is the fastest Pokemon on this team. Which is... I'm comfortable with it because I'm not worried about trying to outspeed things. Uh, this team has a slow switch initiative with Vacuum, but it really relies on you know catering to the tier itself and really being able to counter the tier very well. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But this is our Flygon switch in. Dazzling Gleam is not going to one shot Flygon. Just you know, stating a fact, it's not going to happen. However, uh, with access to, sorry, not with access to, with Flygon's limited access to moves, there's not really anything that Flygon can do to Togetic, so it would be forced to switch when Togetic comes in, and I can easily capitalize on that, and I can get a heal bell off if I need to do that, I can Thunder Wave whatever comes in, because uh, Flygon can't stay in on Togetic, it's a losing battle. I can, even if Flygon's trying to go for, I don't know, Fire Punch, or Thunder Punch, Thunder Punch is even super effective. Thunder Punch isn't going to do anything, it's not Stab, and I have an Eviolite. So I can just Wish, and then Dazzling Gleam, and two Dazzling Gleams will take out Flygon. At least it should. I'd imagine it would. Flygon's not that bulky. However, when I looked at this, so I had my Flygon switch in, so I don't, I don't have to worry about Flygon anymore. However, what I do not have is a switch in for... I don't really have anything that can handle Glalie, Mega Glalie, uh, because Mega Glalie is very fast, and it, ha and it hits really hard. And I don't really have anything for Ambipom. Ambipom, which of course comes in with Stab, Life Orb, Technician, Fake Out. That's huge damage. So that is where Breakdancer comes in. Breakdancer actually covers both of them. Uh, the Assault Vest uh, makes it so that it can take a special attack from a Glalie if that's the type of Glalie that it's running. Or it can intimidate the Glalie and take the refrigerated ice hits all day. And with max attack, it'll easily, easily one-shot Glalie with close combat because Glalie is not very fat. It is very frail, actually. It only has, I believe, base 80, 80 defense and special defense. It's not going to take a close combat from a max attack breakdancer. Basically, the way that this thing works, and I'll explain Pursuit in just a second because I'm sure some of you are scratching your head about that one. This is my switch in for, like I said, Ambipom. That was the first idea. Literally as I was talking, I realized that it's also a very good switch in for Glalie. But it, I built it to be a switch in for Ambipom. Because basically what you can do is you switch this thing in on Ambipom and you get your Intimidate off. Intimidate lowers Ambipom's attack by one stage so it'll hit with that fake out way less hard. Even if Ambipom happens to be running Aerial Ace, which pretty much nobody does, even though it is Technician boosted, it's not going to one-shot me because it's Intimidated. And I could proceed to hit back with a close combat and very easily one-shot it. Because Ambipom is extremely, extremely frail. And it also has, of course, Rapid Spin to get rid of rocks. However, like I was getting at is that 
I switch in on Amy Palm, and Amy Palm's not going to stay in on Hitmontop because it's at minus one. It knows that it can't, you know, one v one with Hitmontop. So I hit it with Pursuit. That, like I said, that's where Pursuit comes in. Pursuit will. It's not going to do crazy damage, but it's a lot of good chip damage that will, you know, it'll really help wither down that Amy Palm, which typically is run with life orbs, so I would have to worry about it coming in and using fake out over and over again a lot less. So I had my I had my primary checks. I also didn't have to worry about Tyrantrum because I can come in with I can come in with Breakdancer, Intimidate it, and then close combat it, or slash bullet punch it and kill it. Because Tyrantrum is, you know, it's got good physical defense, but it's not going to take a close combat that well, and it's not going to take a bullet punch to finish it off. Uh, that combination of moves would almost definitely take it out. If not, I also have Roku there in the back, which will absolutely annihilate it with a Earth Power. Because Clarentium has terrible special defense. I think it's like base 79 or something. Probably actually a lot lower than that. I'm curious how low it is. Because I know it's garbage. Base 59. Wow, that is sad. So yeah, Tyrantrum not gonna not gonna take that very well. <laughs> However, I one of the things that I realized is that there's one Pokemon left in this tier that I was really, really worried about. And that is a Moongus. And you're probably thinking, why would you be worried about a Moongus? It's a Moongus. It it, it doesn't what what the hell does a Moongus do to you? Well, the thing about a Moongus is that it has Spore. And if one of your Pokemon is put to sleep, that means you have dead weight. I was also worried about Mega Camerupt. As you can see, I have Mega Camerupt on my own team. However, Boils will one-shot Mega Camerupt, and Roku cannot outspeed uh, Boils. No matter how hard it tries, it can't. Even at, and I'm just going to show you this just, you know, for GP. Even at that speed, it only gets up to 79, and we're at 96. There's nothing it can do about it. Put that back down to 12, and, you know, plus right there. But anyway, I was worried about Amoongus. And... <laughs> Amoongus is a pain in the ass. It really, really is. Because it has Spore. So I needed something that could switch in on a Moongus. And that is where Sirloin comes in. Sirloin is shell armor, so it can't be critted with safety goggles to be immune to the spore. It's also immune to hail damage and other powder moves like stun spore. And sleep powder. That's ty that type of shit. But the reason that I went with Safety Goggles and Shell Armor is because I can switch this thing in on Amoongus. Amoongus cannot touch it. Giga Drain will do nothing. Sludge Bomb will do nothing. And its last move, meaning on Amoongus, is usually... I don't know. Probably Synthesis. For longevity purposes. Or maybe it has Protect so it can get Black Sludge Recovery. Whatever it's going to be, it's... It could potentially run Hidden Power of Fire, but there's... It, do, it doesn't hit that hard, so there's really no logical reason that it would. So, I have Substitute. Sirloin is really slow. There's no way around it. With 100 EVs in speed, it will outspeed an Amoongus with 12 speed investment. Which, you know... I don't think anybody would run any sort of speed investment into a Moongus because it's, like I said, it has complete garbage attack and special attack. However, just in case, I want to be able to make sure that I outspeed it. Basically, what the point of this is is that I switch in onto a Moongus when it's going for Spore. Then I go for Substitute. And then I have a free Substitute on Sirloin. And... A fire type would be the switch in of choice. However, Sirloin gets access to Drill Run and its attack is phenomenal. It has base 135 attack, which is extremely high. If this thing was under Trick Room, it would be 
one of the most vicious things in the world. But drill run X scissor and iron head. I don't want to miss with mega horn. That was what why I was running X scissor. I don't really even like running drill run because it only has 95 accuracy. But it doesn't learn any other ground type moves, and I needed to be able to hit those fire types because that's what people would switch in to handle a scavalier. Uh, one of the things that I really see coming in on a scavalier would be a typhlosion, choice scarf eruption typhlosion, uh, because you know I can't really handle it. However, with substitute, I know that I can take the one eruption and then fire back a drill run, which should one shot, assuming I hit. So that was my Amoongus switch in, so I was really satisfied with dealing with the tier itself. Um, the, a couple people uh, worry about Alamomola, but Vacuum completely handles Alamomola. Alamomola cannot do anything to me. So, I needed something to set up Stealth Rocks. I had a Rapid Spinner. I had a Rapid Spinner, I wasn't worried about that. I needed something to set up Stealth Rocks. I also wanted something that could capitalize on Sirloin's grass resistance. Because Sirloin double resists grass. It can s switch in on grass attacks for days. So I wanted something that could capitalize on that. So I went with Boils. The other advantage of Boils. Boils is my primary physical wall. It's a good opening mon. It does not... It, it really doesn't... It, it handles... Flygon pretty well. This is like my secondary Flygon handler because it has Ice Punch, which almost one shots Flygon. If Flygon has, you know, just a little bit of prior damage, like 10 to 15 percent, then I can reliably, you know, one shot it with Ice Punch. And Leftover, Scald, and Sludge Bomb. It's another mixed attacker. Then we have two physical and two special. I'm going to get into Roku at the end because Roku is very important. It's very important to the team, especially in terms of explaining why I have it. But we have, you know, Stealth Rock, Scald, Sludge Bomb, Ice Punch, Max HP, Max Physical Defense, Really Fat, Leftovers with Water Absorb. It, what you see is what you get. Uh, that's the thing for Seismitoad. What you see is what you get. That's really why it's there. However, when I was looking at my team, all I was thinking is... Vacuum hits pretty hard. It really does. It's... Uh, with the Life Orb... I want to make sure to get this right. Because I, I did the math before. With Life Orb, each of its attacks are running off of a base attack stat of... 208. Because 160 times 1.3 is 208. So, vacuum hits really, really hard, physically and specially. More especially because that's where it gets its stab with the Thunderbolt. However, knockoff will also hit extremely hard. And U-turn is there for switch initiative, Giga Drain, to get my HP back. Then we have two Pokemon that hit really, really hard physically. We have Hitmontop, which, well, it doesn't, it's not the hardest hitter, but, you know, it hits really hard for what it's going to be up against because it's going to be up against more frail Pokemon or Pokemon that need to set up in order to sweep and, and they can't stay in on it because I have that Intimidate. Sirloin hits like a fucking monster. 205 right off the bat. But I realize I don't have any really hard-hitting special mons. Vacuum hits hard, but... It can't handle. It can't handle camera up. It can't handle a lot of different stuff. So I realized that I needed my own camera up, specifically Mega Camera up, because Sheer Force boosted, 215 base special attack with Hidden Power Grass. The reason I'm running Hidden Power Grass is because I don't have Grass coverage on this team, with the exception of Giga Drain, and. Uh, that that could potentially be an issue, especially if I'm up against, you know, God knows what. I also needed rock coverage on the team, which is why I have Ancient Power. Ancient Power gets the Sheer Force boost as well. It goes up to base 80 power, which is really good. That's the same as Power Gem, which is the best rock type move in the game. <sighs> then you have Flamethrower and Earth Power. They also get, you know, the Sheer Force boost. 
Pinpower Grass does not get the sheer force boost, but there's also nothing else that I needed on the team. I don't need Flash Cannon because I have Sirloin. And there's nothing else that I really wanted or needed. I was considering Will-O-Wisp. I was considering Toxic. I was considering Substitute. Another uh, slow substituter because you can very easily force a switch with Mega Camera. But Hidden Power Grass was the better option because I wanted that extra bit of grass coverage because if I can predict a switch into a Gastrodon, a Seismitoad, or even a... What's that fucker called? Quagsire. Uh, Roku can one-shot with Hidden Power Grass because, as you can see, its special attack set is off the charts. So that's why I went with Hidden Power Grass rather than something else. Flamethrower and Earth Power are, of course, you know, stab. So that's why, you know, everything is what it is. As you can see, it's neutrally bulky um, with, you know, all of that special attack investment. Now I kind of want to go over like the Pokemon individually like I really want to get into a little bit more detail regarding each Pokemon so Roku I kind of already explained to you uh, what its purpose is its purpose is late game sweeping when your opponent doesn't really have you know any anything that can do that much to it like Flygon obviously is a problem for it Ambipom is a bit of a problem for it Amipom probably can't completely handle Roku, but to the same extent, I don't want Roku taking a lot of damage from it. Vacuum is our pivot with the U-turn. It's the only thing on our team with Switch Initiative. I'm not a fan of that, but there's nothing I could really do about it. Especially since I needed the Stealth Rocks from Boils. Scald is also going to be our primary burn source. But we do have Thunder Wave for speed control from Benedict. And then, of course, we have our Amoongus switch, and Amoongus is all over the place in RU because Amoongus is really good. However, if I can get a substitute off, if I can get a substitute off, I can easily take out a minimum of one Pokemon on my opponent's team, even if it's a fire type. Because there are no fire type attacks that hit multiple times in one turn. Not that I, I can't, I really don't think there are. If I'm missing one, I apologize. I don't think I am. So, I have Sirloin. Sirloin is one of my favorite Pokemon to use. It's not in my top seven because of how slow it is, but it's, I still love it because it's so good. It's so bulky and it's a tax that is so high and I had one in-game when I was playing Black and White originally, and I remember just destroying people with it. Because it's so good. And it really, really, really handles the Amoongus. It's a perfect switch-in for Amoongus, because Amoongus can't touch it. Unless Amoongus is running Hidden Power Fire, and there's no reason it should be. This thing can completely handle Amoongus and force it to switch out and get up a free substitute. Well, relatively free. It costs some HP. And then, of course, we have Breakdancer. Breakdancer is for Ambipom. That's really the reason I have it here. Ambipom is in what's called S-Class. S-Class means, from what I can tell, S-Class means the Pokemon fits, like, one niche, and it fits that niche so incredibly well. Like, Ambipom is in that tier because it's Life Orb Technician... Stab, fake out. Comes in, fake out, and then it can U-turn because it's super fast. That's base 115 speed. It's really fast. And as you can tell, this team is really slow. Nothing on this team is that fast. However, it's very bulky. It has a lot of easy, reliable switch-ins. And it has a couple Pokemon that can just come in and nuke things. Roku is our, you know, go-to nuclear reactor. <laughs> Roku can come in very easily on a lot of different moves. It can come in on... Well, it can't come in on, <laughs> it can't come in on a rock-type move, but it can come in on a fire-type move. It can come in on a fire-type Pokemon, such as Typhlosion. 
It can come in on Typhlosion and easily threaten Typhlosion out and then fire off some attacks and it will one-shot a lot of stuff. Not even Benedict, because I actually decided to calc it. Benedict does not appreciate an ancient power. Benedict does not appreciate an ancient power, nor does it appreciate a flamethrower. It does not appreciate those. Those deal a lot of damage. I believe flamethrower is... I think it's a two-hit KO, actually. Uh, ancient power actually does a little bit less, because uh, flamethrower is stab plus sheer force. So it goes up to... Well, flamethrower goes to... One, yeah, Flamethrower does more. It goes up to 180, whereas Ancient Power goes up to 160. So, yeah. Flamethrower was... I, I calc it, and Flamethrower was doing so much. Uh, not to the set that I was running, um, but if it gets knocked off, it does a lot. And, you know, I have very reliable knockoff from Vacuum, and that'll do a lot. However, I could just nuke that thing with Thunderbolt. But like I said, Flygon switch in, Ambipom switch in, Amoongus switch in. Those were the three big things that I was worried about in this tier. And, uh, this is not going to appreciate an Earth Power from Roku. Most people don't run Hidden Power Grass because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because of how slow Roku is. However, this thing can take one Earth Power. It can take one. <laughs> And I can guarantee outspeed and hit that thing with a Scald and kill it. Because it's, you know, four times effective. It can take one. It's not there to take more than one. It can take one. Uh, Breakdancer can actually take one pretty well, but Breakdancer can't really hit back that hard. Uh, Vacuum can also take one. Again, one Flamethrower, but Breakdancer can't hit back hard. And Benedict can't do anything to Roku either. Mega Camerupt is actually my biggest worry. Because, like I said, Boils can only take one. It can't take more than one. It can't take more than one Earth Power because of how strong Mega Camera Up is. However, overall, I am very, very, very pleased with this team. I am a very big fan of this team. I love... I love, sorry, I'm talking to a graphic artist. This team. It, this is the team that I'm going to breed and EV for when I do RU tier battles. Because I only, I only have one team per tier right now. I only have one. I have the original Bulky Method team. I have my Agron and Florgus team. Uh, the UU Bulky Method. And then I have an NU team, which is a secret. You can't know anything about that team at all. I can't, literally nothing. You can't know about that team at all. Because it's part of a much, much, much bigger project. And then if, and uh, I'm going to be working on getting this team together now. Like, while you're watching this, when I'm on the plane to New York or whatever, I'm going to be working on uh, training up this team. So I need to make sure to get all uh, the IVs done beforehand so I can do the EVs on the plane and whatnot. Because I won't have access to my computer. But I want to thank you guys so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. It's very much greatly appreciated. Um, now that I have my four teams, uh, for the four main tiers, I want you guys to leave me suggestions for Pokemon that you want me to build a team around. When I told you guys about the star core method, or the bulky method, tell me Pokemon that you want me to build a team around, or Pokemon that you want to see on a team, and I want to see what what I can do with it. Like, give me a challenge. There are some Pokemon that are really hard to build a team around. Like, Regirock is a pain in the ass, because it has five weaknesses. Give me a challenge. I want to see what I can do, because I really want to show my skills as a team builder because I think that's one of my most marketable skills as a content creator and content producer to say hey if you want to know how to build a really good team you can watch my videos and you can learn I think that's one of the things about my videos that you know 
I may offer more than other content creators. And I'm not saying that as a dig towards other content creators. I'm saying that as, you know, I am by no means an arrogant individual. However, there aren't that many people who build teams like I do. Like, I talked to uh, Mega Mogwai, Miguel, about team building, and he has complimented me on my team building skills. Because I said, what do you think about this set? And he's like, that's a really good set. I'm going to try that out sometime. So, you know, if if Mega Mogwai says you know how to team build, then uh, you know how to team build. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just love Miguel. I love him so much. He, he's like... He's like a brother to me, because we're like clones of one another, which you'll see when I interview him again. But, again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I love you. I have to record more videos, because I want to make sure that you guys have content every day that I'm gone. So I'm going to get up out of here. Best of luck out there. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.